Hello, welcome back. So now, let's talk about the problem of uh, finding out CCD, colony collapse disorder. What's causing colony collapse disorder? Now there are two approaches for this, at least two scientific approaches. One would be the forensic approach, which means that uh, we gotta find the dead bees and then analyze them to see what chemicals we find in their bodies and then correlate those chemicals to the chemicals that we can find in some uh, pesticides. Uh, neonicotinoids being the main focus right now. The problem with that approach, which is, which is a very valid one, by the way, is that most of the organic chemistry that goes on inside the hive, it's uh, inside the bee body, it's really uh, difficult and not well understood right now and understanding that chemistry is going to take some time and we know so far that uh, those chemicals once the, uh, inside the bee bodies they absorb and uh, change chemically so we have to find those new chemicals formed with the other chemicals so finding the culprit uh, or the smoking gun that way is going to take a lot of time but we might not have that much time. We're losing 40%, 30% of our uh, bee colonies every year. So there's another approach, thank God. And that is the statistical circumstantial approach, which means that if we collect enough data, like the one we can generate with the hive genies, and we add that to a map, and then we can correlate the colony losses against events like uh, farm, uh, farmers spreading out uh, or spraying uh, these pesticides, then we can create correlations and say, hey, every time you spread this pesticide, we had a dead event occurring three, two, four days after you sprayed. Or every single day that you spray, we lost 5,000 bees on a single day up per colony. So that alone could pinpoint a culprit or at least generate a very, very solid evidence. Even if we don't have the actual smoking gun, we can say, hey, there's a gun somewhere out there and it might be this one. All statistics indicate that this is the gun. So what we're gonna do is uh, either you as a farmer stop using this pesticide or we will just not bring our bees here, or we'll wait two or three days after you spray, spray your pesticide to bring our bees in. That's the way you handle that. You don't wait for uh, pesticide companies to say, hey, my fault, I'm sorry, we're gonna take this product out of the market. That's not gonna happen. They're not gonna lose money or their jobs, recognize a mistake, they just want a new product out before they can actually stop producing what they're doing. So can't blame him for that, although we should. But it's up to us, the consumers. So buying organic food, buying local food, the beekeepers, working with the farmers, the farmers, hey, you actually need the bees, so protect them, okay? Look for other ways, look for other pesticides. What did you use 20 years ago? Is that not working? There are always always solutions to a problem. Okay, so there's a lot of ways to model the bee population, okay? And uh, one of the most mathematically beautiful models that I found is this by Miss um, Kelly Brown. And the math to model bee population is really, really complicated. Fortunately, I have another approach for you guys. But let me let me just uh, show you what we're talking about here. So it starts with things like these and formulas like this. And then things start getting a little bit more complex. There's a the model, see? Lots and lots of good mathematics. A lot more mathematics. I'm not going to go through it, although I did went through it superficially. I'm not a mathematician. I'm just a 
an engineer, so I know enough to know I don't want to get into that. I'm going to take her word. Okay. So, what all this shows is that if bees die faster than the queen can lay them and replenish them, then the hive is going to die. And what she found with all those numbers is that if foragers die, on average, every 1.7 days that they're foraging, rather than the typical four or five days that they can actually live while foraging, then the death rate is going to be higher than what the queen can uh, replenish. So the beehive is going to die eventually. So you want your bees, your foragers, to live more than four or five days. And what we did is, again, a mass balance of bees. So the bees that are, are uh, born minus the ones that die equals that, uh, the growth, that growth in, in bee population, all right? So let's assume that we have uh, 30,000 foragers and just 5,000, uh, 25,000 come back. So 5,000 foragers are gonna be uh, dead. The queen can only replace about 1,500 a day. That means that if we lose 5,000, then we're going to be able to replenish 3,500. Eventually, if we have a high population of 60,000 divided by 3,500, then we only have 17 days left of our high population, which in reality is much less than that because uh, the beehive needs some high bees to act as nurses and, and to ventilate the hive and to tend to the queen. So the death rate is going to be much more uh, higher than that. Uh, assuming that, that the foragers die at a much higher rate, then you would definitely have something like four days of, um, of life. Example, if, if you lose your four years are a rate of uh, about 1.7 days, then you mean it means that you lose about 13,000, 1,500 four years a day, which is about half of, of the 30,000 four year population. And in that case, then you only have about four days left. Now, the tricky part is that if you just look at your hive, you're not going to be able to tell that because you're going to see a lot of activity. You're going to see a lot of bees flying out and a lot of bees flying in. So when, when uh, half of the foragers don't come back, what the bees are going to do is the high bees usually stay for 18 days inside the hive. But when not enough food is coming in because the uh, foragers are not making it back, then what they're going to do is they're just going to go out before those 18 days are over. And in a, a bee, a nurse bee or a high bee, can be out in as little as four days. So you're still going to see the 30,000 bees going out every day, but what's going to happen is that their ability to sustain and feed the brood population and keep them cool or warm is going to be greatly diminishing. So you're still going to see a lot of activity at the hive entrance, but then four days later or 15 days later, you just open the hive and there are no bees in. Of course not. They all went out foraging and they all died. And even you still have a queen, and even though she's still capable of laying, there are not enough bees to take care of the brood or, or the eggs. So she's going to reduce her laying rate, and eventually the hive is going to die or be reduced to a nuke size. So that's kind of the problem. But with the hive genie, you can detect the losses the same day. Because if you get your bees that go out, and you bees that come back, so you're missing 5,000, the same day that you lose 5,000, you can trigger an alarm saying, hey, we have bees that are getting lost at a higher rate than the queen can lay in. So anything about 1,500 would trigger an alarm and let you know that something is wrong. And you can take measures like close your hive for a day or two, feed them while the uh, pesticide, it's uh, getting diluted or loses strength in the environment or you can take your hive uh, someplace else, or you can talk to your farmer, stop spraying that. And that's when you get, when you get real-time information. Instead of reacting 28 days later, which in, in case of uh, uh, toxicity, 
via pesticide is too late. Uh, when you have uh, real-time information like the Hive Genie provides, uh, then you can safely assume that something is wrong out there and you can take actions right away. And that's the beauty of bidirectional accounting and counting bees both ways, out and in. And so far the Hive Genie has patented that technology and we're the only ones that can do that. So it is really important to count bees that come back in and so you can get a solid number for what, how many bees are you losing out there. All right, so that's it for now. This is just a little thought on the importance of having bidirectional accounting because that way you can stop your bees from getting depleted by some sort of chemical out there. All right, thank you. Remember, buy local, buy organic.